Diamond Painting Addict, thank you very much for joining me back on my channel. I do apologise for um, my voice. I seem to be getting over another cold, which isn't handy really. Um, but I wanted to come to you with a completely different video. So, as you may have known, if you know me, at the beginning of the year I was completely flooded out. I mean, my house was so underwater that we had to move out, myself, my fiance, and my two cats. And it just so happened that a very, very lovely couple just in the village, the next village, let us have their annex. Now, originally we thought this was going to be three days. However, it ended up being about two weeks. So as we had to be rescued by the fire brigade, you can appreciate that we couldn't really take much. So I have a, a love of diamond painting, as you know, if you are already a subscriber. However, this is going to be a floss tube video. So when we were in the uh, annex, I was I had issues with being able to go to work because my car was completely cut off water wise. I was lucky that it wasn't damaged, but there was water where my car was. It was parked on a mound and there was water one side and water the other. So I physically couldn't get my car out of, you know, the area that it was so I couldn't go to work. So there's me stuck there in this annex, not being able to go to work, bored out of my brains, not being able to take any diamond painting, because as you know, you need you know a lot of space for diamond painting. You at least need a table. And, and although we had a table, it was we got rescued by the fire brigade, let's face it, and there was only so many basics that we could take. So I'm just going through YouTube, looking at videos, and lots of cross stitch videos start coming up you know i start doubling in different videos and then it you know goes on to another video and onto another video and come across Teresa a little stitcher and um went through all of her videos uh she has a lot of videos um up and you know really informative and she has a, a group of videos of um you know the basics of cross stitch so i went through those i really enjoyed those i mean i'm not completely new to cross stitch However, I haven't done it in a long time. So it was nice to get, you know, refreshed. And the more time that I spent on YouTube, the more time I thought, oh, that sounds, that sounds like it's something I could do. I don't need a huge setup. I don't need a table. You know, I don't need a lot of space. I can just do that here. And, um, you know, that sounds perfect for, for me right now. So I did a bit more research and I was uh, looking at patterns and came across heaven and earth designs and oh my days i was in love so i decided to join a couple of groups so i joined caustic addict cross stitch addicts heaven and earth designs um your new heaven and earth designs facebook group and cross stitch unlimited and the work there's so much heaven and earth design um work on there it was just absolutely gorgeous then the more I got into it, people started talking about Pattern Keeper. And I thought, okay, this is interesting. It's some kind of uh, app that you can get. Now, me being a Samsung girl meant that I'm on Android. So it seemed that it was only, it is only compatible with Android right now. So I was looking at that and thinking, well, what would I like to do for my patterns? So I went on Heaven and Earth Designs because most of those, if not all of them, are all supported by this pattern keeper. And um, I decided to download a couple of patterns. So this video really is a video on um, whips and hauls. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do like a monthly video on whips and hauls so you can see progress. I love watching people's videos. Uh, Teresa Little Stitcher is one um, channel that I love. Another one is Nikki B Crafts. I love her channels. I love just watching her cross stitch. She has, she just cross stitches. And then she has this really nice, chilled classical music that she cross stitches to. And it just, it's just lovely. Sometimes it's nice just to put that on while you're, whilst you're working. However, I digress. 
So coming back to Pattern Keeper, I can remember my mum when I was about five years old and she was sat in a chair and she would be uh, doing her cross stitch and, and the fundamental cross stitch that I can remember was all of our star signs. There's five of us in our family. And I just remember her sitting on the chair with her pencil, because she used to use a pencil and a pad so she could, because at that point everything was paper. I know you can get paper copies now, but all of the patterns were on paper. And she'd be like scribbling out all the um, the squares as and when she'd done them. And I just remember sitting or standing to the side of her, um, leaning on the armchair, looking at her, seeing what she's doing. And I just found it fascinating. So when I was younger, I did go and get, um, I was taken to, I can't even remember where I was taken to. I don't even think hobby craft was around then, but maybe just a craft shop somewhere, you know, and they had some small patterns. And I remember coming home and mum introducing me to cross stitch, but I couldn't really sit down long enough. It just, it baffled me completely. For me, it was just so overwhelming. I just couldn't deal with it. So I, I didn't really get a love of cross stitch, but I, I dabbled in it when I was younger. Anyway, so coming back to me being in this annex, I was thinking, well, this would be perfect for me to be able to do whilst I'm here. Because like I said earlier, I don't need a lot of space. I can get things delivered here. Um, there was talks of a company called Lakeside and generally they deliver the next day. So I thought, okay, well, you know, I'll download a couple of patterns. I say a couple of patterns. I'll get to that. <laughs> download a couple of patterns on, um, on, pa on Pattern Keeper and um, I'll use my phone and we'll go from there. So I did that. I then looked at um, Floss. I went to Hobbycraft and was completely floored, like literally floored at how much DMC costs. So I I think it was gonna cost me 180 pounds, 180? I think it was about 180 pounds to kit up this kit and i said to the sales assistant i'm so sorry at this point i didn't realize how much a scheme was i, mean, I was just assuming it's like 20 pence a scheme and i said to her, i'm so sorry I, I will go and put them all back but i think i'm gonna have to you know look at some other way of being able to get this floss i'm thinking that just hobby craft itself was going to be really expensive no that is the cost of DMC threads. And generally, you know, although you will have pence cheaper online and things like that, generally DMC are quite expensive. So I um, I joined another group called CXC and I purchased the whole, the whole DMC, um, well, what do you call it? Like the whole set of DMC threads, but in CXC. So CXC are like DMC, but they're a different different thread and they are so much cheaper. So I went on AliExpress and I purchased, I think there was about 445 skeins of thread at that point. This was full. This has been used to kit quite a lot of my kits. But whilst I was there, I also came across people... Um, bobbinating their work and that was something that was new to me as well I whenever I got cross stitch kits before you know you have the piece of paper or the card bit and then you've got you know all your strands hanging through but I was uh looking at some videos and um, people had bobbinated their work and I thought well that's interesting I'm I'm super I'm super I, I love being organized although oh, this looks like um, a bit of a car crash right now but I'll, I'll get to that I love organization I love tidiness and organization and in fact I will let you into a little secret with regards to my um, issues. So, I I love reading and I, as well as buying a book, I also have it on, what do you call it? Oh, Kindle. So I don't have to actually read my book and break the spine or anything like that. I have them all, you know, neatly neatly on my bookshelf and I'll come back to one of my patterns as well because it, it relates to that and um if I have a friend that says oh can I borrow that book I give the book to her and then I buy her and I buy another one because I don't want that book to come back because by then it's been read that's just how weird I am so that's where I am with bobbinating I know a lot of people say it's time consuming but I need I need that organization in my life 
so I purchased I think I was I don't know it was hundreds I went on AliExpress again and uh, I was able to buy these by the hundreds and I think I paid like a tenner for like 250 of them and all of the all of the threads here they're absolutely stunning I mean I've I've used quite a lot of them but what I do now is I go through if I'm kitting up a project and anything I haven't got I message a lovely lady called Abigail from Cross and Crafts and a lot of you that use CXC threads will know how amazing her customer service is I mean you literally send her your list of threads that you need and she will send them out to you they will be with you next day it's phenomenal it's so amazing it's so quick but this whole pack of threads cost 35 pounds i believe now it did take about four weeks to get to me however it was so much cheaper so what i ended up doing is from then on i just ended up using cxc threads now a lot of people have said that there is a, a huge difference in in CXC and DMC with regards to the quality. So I thought, okay, well, I'll try that out. Now, I haven't got it with me because I don't know where it is. I was trying to find it before this video. But I did a small project and I did it with DMC and CXC. Now, I used the same count fabric, <clears throat> excuse me, and the same design. And I looked at both of them. And in actual fact, the quality of the thread was so much better in the CXC than it was a DMC, which is bizarre because CXC costs as little as 11 pence per thread, per skein of thread, and DMC can cost you up to, well, in, I know in Hobbycraft it was 98 pence per skein of thread, but I do know that you can get them, um, you know, a lot cheaper online, maybe sort of 60, 70 pence per skein. But when, when you're kitting up these big kits, they do cost a fortune. So what I do now is I go through my stash of what I've got and then I'll send uh, Abigail a message saying, can you please send me and I'll give her a list of all of the skeins that I need. And she's like, yep, yeah, yeah. And she comes back to you straight away and they land on your doorstep the next day. They go out first class. She's absolutely brilliant. And generally it costs me about a fiver just to kit, kit up one of my kits. So um, I'm going to go through what projects I'm working on at the moment and um, I've got a bit of a haul as well but I just wanted to go through sort of what I'm using and things like that so after using Pattern Keeper on my phone it wasn't really working I mean you just need a bigger platform it works you can you can deal with it however a bigger platform would have been much better so I went out and I purchased the I've actually got it on here now the tablet tab a Samsung because I'm a Samsung girl um, and this has all of my project projects on um, and I'm not oops hang on I'm not working on all of these at the moment However, this has all of the projects uh, that I'm working on now and the ones I would like to work on future wise. And it's fantastic. I cannot, I can't rave about Pattern Keeper enough. It is a game changer. So if anyone out there is considering using Pattern Keeper but is just not quite sure, do it. Download it. It costs like seven quid to download and it will change your life. It will change your life. Now I have I have done cross stitch before, but I've never I've always done the paper version. You know, you get the kits and things like that. But this is great because you never really lose your place. And there's certain different methods that I found um, to do in cross stitch. One of them is parking, and most of you know what parking is. But this gives you a really good way of keeping on top of your threads and so knowing which threads are which because you can park your threads in this. So. Um, I purchased some Heaven and Earth designs and just going back to, okay, let me just go back to the start of when I first started cross stitch in this annex, okay, not from when I first started it 100 years ago, right. The knowledge I had was that in kits you normally get 14 or 16 count and I just thought that was normal. 
And I know, I knew from uh, looking up um, Heaven and Earth Designs and their 25 count and looking at the size of their projects, I knew that if I were to do something on a 14 count, that my project would be a lot bigger. So I purchased a lot, now I mean a lot, of fabric for my different Heaven and Earth Designs that I had uh, received. I am a hoarder with regards to things like that. I don't just buy as I need. I just think, oh, you know, well, I'll buy it and then, then I'll have it. That was mistake number one. And I'll tell you why. So my first project that I decided that I was going to start was, uh, let me just find it now. I'd seen this one on Teresa Little Stitches videos and I loved it I fell in love with it and if you watch her videos which I'm sure you do because she's amazing you will know this one and this one is Grace Faces um this one is by Josephine Wall and it was it is absolutely stunning the colors in this are phenomenal I absolutely love them so I thought okay well you know it's only seven by nine and a quarter inches on 25 count so i want it to be bigger so i bought 14 count fabric for this let me just get my fabric uh, where is it bear with oh days okay so sorry for that this is uh the first shot at this should I say, that I had, and it didn't come out too badly. I started it and then decided that I just didn't want it anymore. So this is the start of this project, and this is 14 count fabric. Um, not bad. I used two skeins, two um, skeins, two threads for this. Um, and the coverage is okay, however, you know, going through people's work and having a look at it on, on Cross Stitch Unlimited, I was thinking, oh, you know, it looks so much neater if the crosses are smaller. So I wasn't really overly happy, but at this point I'd also started another one called Peacock Days in Max Colours, which is this one. Again, absolutely loving the colours on this. Stunning. I do love colour. I'm such a colour person. And my start on that one was this. Now, it's not horrendous, but it's not, it's not amazing. And the more I was doing it, the more I was just thinking, oh, I just, I don't know. I just don't like it. So I decided to put them both away and I found another, oh, I found another pattern that I had to have. So my love of books meant that when I came across this, I was completely in love. I mean, I can't tell you, I just loved this. So I decided that because it's such a big project, I was going to do this on 25 count. Yeah. So the start of this was... like this and I was doing it and the more I was doing it the more I was thinking oh god I can't see I cannot because at this point and I think the biggest mistake is I went from 14 count fabric to 25 count fabric and I was doing it and doing it and I was thinking oh just this is so hard I can't find the holes so I bought a um a light magnifying thing and I mean, it's okay, it's, it's, it's okay, it's all right. I bought a light magnifier and that just wasn't working because the magnifying light was too heavy and it kept topping over and then I was getting frustrated and I just was not enjoying this at all. And I was just thinking to myself, I've got over 713,000 stitches to do in this. There is no way that I am gonna be able to do this in 25 count, it's just, too hard, I'm not enjoying it, I'm hating it, I'm hating everything about it. 
and I need to really get some of this done because it's going to take me 160 years as it is and if I don't work on it it's going to like take me forever so I had heard a lot about uh, different other fabrics and fabric counts and um, aiders and even weaves and I thought okay well I want the size of my project to be bigger than 25 count anyway because I want to be able to put my projects on the wall so what about if I went to something like 18 count because you've still got the coverage with the threads because you use two threads for that and I restarted Grey Spaces and let me tell you guys this is with CXC threads so this is, I'm going to put something at the back, this is my Grace Faces using CXC threads. The colours are stunning. Um, it looks a bit erratic. I don't know why it looks so erratic. Um, I, I did that one I started that one second to actually starting my bookshelf, the Bounty, Bountiful bookshelf on 18 count. And that one, which I'll show you in a minute, is really, really neat, really organized, really lovely parking method. And then, and then there's that, that looks like I've had, it looks like my brain has gone mental, fraz frazzled. And I've just been all over the place. So if I show you, so I started that first and I thought, oh, I really love this. I love the coverage on this. And I thought it's the size of the fabric is going to be a lot bigger anyway than the 25 count for the Bountiful Bookshop and Bountiful Bookshelf. However, it's going to be a project that goes on my wall. So I'm not really too worried about that. And if I can get the coverage that I've got on this, on 18 count fabric, it's just gonna look amazing. So I got 18 count fabric. Um, I think this is Ada. Is it Ada? Yes, I think this is Ada, actually. Okay, so this is, excuse all the threads because I do park I do the parking method. This is my new project started for the Bountiful Bookshelf on 18 count fabric. Now look at that. I mean I know it doesn't look like anything at the moment because it's literally just the edge of the of the bookshelf but I don't know if I can get it closer. Look at the coverage. How stunning is that coverage? How neat and beautiful does that look? So that was me done then. I was I was blown away. I was like, right, 18 count is my is my go-to fabric. Absolutely loving this. So I've been working on that and I have been working on Grace Faces. And I decided that I didn't really want to start another project until I'd got a lot more of my gray spaces done by then I'd only had I only had a little bit of the left hand side of it done I hadn't had a lot of the top you know and, and, and coming down then I thought I want to start like another project because I'm just getting a bit like ah. Uh. so I went on to the heaven and earth design again the heaven and earth designs website and I found this little project which I thought would be perfect because I didn't want to start anything too huge because I had this I've already got a huge project going and I purchased, and it's here somewhere, Amy Stewart's Story Keep. How stunning is that? Look at the colours. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, now I've done 18 count and I've been working on that for a while and I'm, I'm loving it. The only thing about 18 count with using two strands of threads is that the, because I'm doing full cross as well, the threads don't always sit completely flat. 
Now, that is completely natural. You're never going to have every single thread sitting completely flat. And I'm not someone who railroads. Um, I don't really spend a lot of time making sure that every single strand is sat flat. I do, however, let my needle hang and, and unravel it and, and try and keep my threads as flat as possible. Having said that, I'd also read on the internet and on the Facebook groups that if you do one, if you do cross stitch with one thread, it's it's so much neater because it just sits so much more flat. That doesn't even sound right. It's so much neater because it sits flatter, basically. So I was umming and ahhing and thinking, I know that I don't like 25 count, but part of me was like, I want to try it again. And now I've done the 18 count where the holes are so much smaller than the 14 count. I mean, let's face it, I went from 14 to 18 count, not 16 to 18 count. I mean, 14 count is still, is a pretty big count. <laughs> the holes are pretty big. So I thought to myself, right, I'm going to purchase um, this and I'm going to do it in 25 count. Seeing as I've got a hell of a lot of 25 count fabric left, it seemed, <coughs> excuse me, it seemed, you know, worthwhile that, you know, I would try it. And this is the start of my project for Story Keep. This is on my Q-snap. I don't ordinarily like Q-snaps. However, there isn't a hell of a lot of extra material on this. And I've made sure that you know, when, when this project has done it, it really sits in the middle. So a lot of this I can get rid of, but loving, loving, loving 25 count. I, hang on, see if I can get it. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's gorgeous. I'm loving doing it. I, the holes on the fabric, I'm not finding too much of an issue. I don't know whether it's because I went from 14 count straight to 25 count that I just was like, ah, can't deal with this. But then doing the jump from 14 to 18, then 18 to 25, I think it was more, it was easier for my brain to, to deal with. So that's what I'm doing that on. And I'm loving the fact that the threads sit perfectly. It's just stunning. So that's a, that's a new start. And I was going to start the um, Peacock Days but I'm thinking at the moment with the size of the project that I've got going on with the Bountiful bookshelf, I think I've got more than enough to get on with. And once I'm pretty much two, of the th two thirds or three quarters through the story keep, then I might look at starting Peacock Days. But for a minute, I think I'm just gonna stay with where I am. I wanna get Grace Faces done at least half, story keep at least three quarters or um, two thirds before I then start another project. Which then brings me to my hauls. So, I discussed earlier that, oh, I've just dipped my thread in tea. Grand. I discussed earlier that I use Pattern Keeper. So I, I did go out and buy um, iPad. This is a tablet, Tab A. No, it's not an iPad. It's a, a Tab A, Samsung Galaxy Tab A. So that was a, a haul. It was quite expensive. However, I say it's expensive. And it, it's an expensive buy for what I'm using it for. I'm literally using it for Pattern Keeper. I don't have Facebook on it or anything because I don't want any distractions. But when I'm using this for my cross stitch, all I want to do is cross stitch. I don't want anyone disturbing me with Facebook notifications or anything. So the only thing that's on this is Pattern Keeper. So if you think get think about it from that perspective yes it was probably a quite an expensive haul or an expensive buy however I cannot live without pattern keeper so that is that the other thing is I've got a, a massive love for needle minders now originally I had on this one when I when I bought my fabric I bought some needle minders as well because I thought they would really help with the parking they can kind of keep things out of the way and my original needle needle minders were um, this one here 
which is my gorgeous pink octopus, which a lot of people have mentioned and said that, you know, they're gorgeous. I also had this one here, which is a lovely um, Cinderella type carriage. And I think Teresa has this one as well. And then I also bought, I can't feel it, where is it here? I also bought this one here, which is another octopus because I just, they're big as well. So they really help with keeping threads out the way. Um, the other one that I had is on, this is one I had originally. You're gonna have to excuse me. I'm trying not to sniff, but I've got a terrible cold at the moment. Is this here, which is stunning. And I don't know why, but they all seem to be sea creatures pretty much apart from Cinderella's carriage. And that wasn't planned. It just happened. So that's what, when I first started cross stitch, when I was in the annex, that's what I purchased. And then when I started doing this story keep, I purchased this one. And oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Absolutely stunning. It's a really red color crab. And sometimes in the, I don't know if you can see, sometimes in the light, you can really get the colour. I think that's probably more... Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on, let me find out where you are. There we are. It's beautiful. But when I go close up to the camera, it takes out the light, so it doesn't give it a very true likeness of the colour. But anyway, it's beautiful. But then going on, going on with the sea creature type theme, which wasn't planned, it just happened. I then purchased um, this tea horse. Like, I don't know what's going on. They're all sea creatures, but you know, I just love it. Absolutely gorgeous. So they are on my bigger project at the moment. And I also, because I wanted to get the set of the octopus um, needle minders, I then purchased this one. So this is the blue one. So they come in blue, silver, and pink. And this is from www.plantostitch.co.uk. Turn it over. They originally had a Etsy store, but I don't think she's got an Etsy store anymore because I went to buy this. And when I went onto Etsy, which is where I got the original ones from, it said that the Etsy store was no longer there. So that was a bit odd. So then I just Googled, octopus needle minders and this came up and it actually ended up being the same person so i've got a blue octopus needle minder and then i purchased and this is the same place that i purchased all of the sea creature needle minders from needle minders from and actually the cinderella one i think is the same place these are from denkai designs and she has an etsy page because I'm still buying from her. But how gorgeous are these? They are just stunning. I'm such a girly girl. I'm such a blingy girl. I absolutely love it. Love, love, love it. And I just fell in love with those. Yes, you can buy one, but I had to have both. So they're great. That's another That's another um, couple of needle miners that I can pop on my work. I don't think they're gonna be amazing for uh, parking because they, they've not got enough meat to them. However, I think they'd be great for just popping a needle on, which is actually, let's face it, what needle wine was for. So what else have I got? I have also purchased another, I don't know if you can see on this one. This is a brand new grime guard. And I love the material on this. I don't know, it's a bit bizarre. I think grime guard materials can be a bit out there. And this was the only one that I thought, actually, yeah, that's quite nice. This one here I got from Lakeside. And it's um it's a bit it's a bit more chill compared to some of the fabric the fabrics they've got for grime guards. But the purple one I got from Cross Stitch, uh stitched up, cross XX stitched up. And she makes them to order. So that was the 1117, which is actually on this project at the moment. And then I don't know where the card is for this, but this is, oh, it's in there. Uh, 
17 by 17 this one is i bought another grime guard from the same person her store is on etsy so if you want to if you want to get one of her grime guards she makes them to order then just you know hit her up she's on etsy the other thing that i bought was what was the other thing i bought oh so i use so when i when i kit up my my projects i always kit them up in these dmc boxes i uh, so i bought another dmc box because i think i've got a couple just because i like to have all of my projects in separate boxes so i just got one of those and i have also got okay i also got a few of these now as you know i bobinate so when I bobinate, I always use these DMC stickers to go on the top. So if I pull one out as an example, so this is this is a kitted up. I know it's a bit of a mess in there. I know I I always know which kit it belongs to, even though I think I do need to start writing on the box what project that's for. But if I open take that out, you can see. All the DMC codes on there and just see how neat it is. I just find them so much neater when they are, you know, st when they're stuck on rather than, well, let me see. There you go. When they're stuck on rather than written on, I think sometimes they can look messy. Not to say that anyone has got any messy bobbins, I'm not trying to put that across, but for me, I just i just find it easier and neater if they're all done with stickers and it's so much quicker as well because you just go okay i need number 162 you get 162 there i can just take it off and stick it on my bobbin and it just makes things a lot quicker so that is i think that is the end of my haul oh one thing someone had mentioned on one of someone else's channel and i can't remember who it was was how do you keep track of the stitches that you do with your different projects so i just wanted to introduce you to the way in which i keep track of my stitches so this is a, a kiki key planner um as you can see kiki k well that just says k but it is from kiki k as you can see and I have loads of her planners, as you can probably see from the back. Um, I've got three A5, A6s, A6, the big ones. And at the bottom, I've got their three B6 planners. Now, unfortunately, and devastatingly, they have just announced that they are going into administration unless they have a buyer and I'm hoping to God they have a buyer soon. So their UK website has gone down. However, you can still purchase on their Australian website because they primarily are an Australian company. Failing that, if you are in the UK, if you have a look at the Australian website <clears throat> and decide that you like certain planners, you can phone Kiki K. Now they've got one in Bristol, they've got one in Guildford and then they've got two in London. So just give them a call. You can pay over the phone and they will send them out to you. That is a lot quicker than buying them online because I think they take about three to four weeks because they do come from Australia. Now, this is primarily a planner for my cross stitch only. So that's what it looks like inside. I mean, it's not very interesting, but if I go to today, this is almost like a snapshot of all of my stitching that I've done. So um, this one here says, is it 516 um, bookshelf? That's on the 10th of February, is it February? March, 10th of March. Oh yeah, because we're in March. Um, and I've got, an, an, where it says 17, I've got a new start. So I can write down when I've got a new start and then at the end, so if I go back to February, I will tally up how many stitches I've done for each project, and then I'll put them on the on the side there, and then I know how many 
how many stitches that I've done for each project so I can just keep an eye on it and then if I feel like I'm not doing enough on one project I might make that you know something I concentrate on for the next one but at the moment I don't seem to have any plan per se of which projects I'm doing I just pick up the projects that I feel like I want to work on and at the moment it is very much the story keep but I definitely need to make more progress on the bookshelf bountiful bookshelf because otherwise it's going to take me 750 years to finish that because I've got 713,000 stitches so I think that is the end I believe I'm looking at doing monthly videos I might do bi-weekly because at the moment I'm off work I have been told that our restaurant is closing for 12 weeks because of this coronavirus so I possibly will be getting a job in the meantime but it will be about 20 hours a week so I'll have loads of stitching time but that's where I think it might be bi-weekly it might be monthly depending on how much stitching I get done so I get done <laughs> so thank you very much for watching this video I hope that it's been interesting for you and enjoyable I will like I I will try and keep the diamond painting videos and the cross stitch painting cross stitch painting diamond painting videos and the cross stitch videos separate I will have separate playlists what I don't really want to do is have two separate channels I primarily want one channel but the separation so if you are interested in diamond painting you can go into diamond painting you'll have you know a diamond painting playlist and then you'll have a cross stitch playlist and if you don't want to watch a diamond painting you don't have to watch any of those videos and vice vice versa if you don't want to watch any cross stitch videos because you're a diamond painter then you don't have to watch them it's completely up to you so that separation is there however it would be nice to keep everything together because they they're quite integral aren't they they you know diamond painting came from cross stitch to a point because the drills and the diamonds from the diamond paintings are you know dmc colors so dmc primarily is is for cross stitch that's what you know what dmc thread was was for and the numbers correlate to the dmc threads but likewise the colors of the drills or diamonds whatever you want to call it correlate to the dmc numbers so there is a correlation there so they're they're to a point a similar craft but not really Certainly what I find with diamond painting is I get I get through projects a lot quicker than I do with my cross stitch. However, I enjoy them for different reasons. I love doing cross stitch. I love just sitting there and it's nice that I tend to do it on my bed and I can just chill out and watch a film or listen to an audiobook. But with diamond painting, I have to be sat at my desk and it does take a little bit more space. So you have, there has to be a bit more preparation and organisation to doing diamond paintings. However, you know, some of the, you know, some of the big ones come out fabulous and actually the, I don't know if you can see it, the sunflowers on my wall, that's a diamond painting. This is lovely. I do all my diamond paintings to go on the wall, to go on wall art and likewise with my cross stitch, you know, I, I get the projects I really like that I want to put on, on my wall in my house. So that's where we're going with that. If you've got any questions or comments or anything, please pop it in the comments box. I will always come back to you. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will speak to you soon. Bye.